So let's get a reaction now from Jonathan Isabi, who's the editor of Brexit Central. That's a website aims to promote a positive vision of the UK after it exits the EU. Very good morning to you. Um, good morning. What did you make of what Theresa May uh, said yesterday and the reaction since? I think she provided a lot of clarity and in a lot of cases it was a case of her restating what she said in the Lancaster House speech back in January. We are leaving the European Union in two years' time. Indeed, Article 50 has been triggered. Uh, so we, no, that is a fact that we will be leaving at that juncture. But I think what she also did was set a, a very positive and optimistic tone in terms of Britain's future as a sovereign nation, but also a very conciliatory tone towards the European Union, making clear that we want to part on amicable terms, not least because we actually want very different things. Uh, John called Juncker's speech, uh, the State of the European Union address, just last week or two weeks ago now made very clear that he wants to take the EU in a far more integrationist direction, uh, getting all countries to join the euro and more pooling of sovereignty. We simply don't want that. And that's why we voted leave in the referendum last year. We simply said we want different things. We wish you well. Let's part amicably. And I think that's what her speech was all about yesterday. Yes, you see, Jonathan, that's the easy bit, isn't it? The tone is the easy bit. Negotiations are different. So when David Davis sits down on Monday... What's changed? Because the question will remain from his EU counterparts, how much are you going to pay? I think the very important development in the speech yesterday was her saying Britain would want to honour its commitments made during the period of our membership. Now, uh, you just talked about various figures being banded around on the front pages. What this all refers to is the fact that the European Union budget uh, cycle runs for a seven-year period and the current cycle started in 2014 it will end in 2020 and obviously decisions were made back in 2013 about the, the the period running to 2020 based on the UK being a contributor Theresa May yesterday clearly wanted to say we will continue to pay what you expected us to pay until the end of 2020 but, of course, what she didn't say was a number, quite rightly. This is a negotiation. These things have to be negotiated. And, of course, an, an important aspect of that is to remember, of course, the EU has considerable assets. And since we've been a member of the European Union and, indeed, the European Economic Community before that, for the last four decades, there are assets that the European Union has upon which we would be able to also lay claim. And that would need to be taken into account in the calculation as well. OK, Jonathan, you, I mean, you're not a politician. You're not in those negotiations. So you put a number number on it for us. I'm not going to put a number on it now because there are, there, it is a very, very, very complicated process. But clearly, in, in terms of the contribution that we'd be expected to make uh, in 2019 and 2020, that, that comes to about, I think, £18 billion, £9 billion in each of those years in terms of a net contribution. But as I say, there, there are the assets to be taken into account as well. It's, it's a very complicated process. You know, you know, the euro files have been telling people like me for years that uh, the, the amount of influence the EU has over of British law and British life is minimal and that it was hyperbole but for people like me to say that the EU has got involved in every single area of British life. But actually what we're seeing right now in terms of the negotiation that's having to go on is that we're going to have to unpick four decades of integration, four decades of EU law, which indeed have got into every single area of national life. And it actually vindicates those of us who've been saying that for a very long time. OK, well, I mean, it's not about point scoring. This is about practical uh, issues, isn't it? So that two-year transition period, who's in charge? Well, again, it wasn't news that there's going to be a, a transition period in the speech that no, she no, made. No, no, my question, no, I mean, the, the, we, we can all talk around the issues. I'm just trying to find out what you think. Who, in that two-year transition period, in legal terms... Who's in charge? Well, an, an agreement is going to have to be made. That, that, what that do is you the think? whole point of these negotiations. You know, it is going to be a bit of a limbo period where we're, it, it's going to be a kind of halfway house be between full uh, UK sovereignty and the position that we're in at the moment. What's important is that she said that that transition period will be time limited. You know, there are some people, the, the kind of continuity remain campaign, who've been hoping that a transition can last forever and ever and ever and that we'll never actually leave. Theresa May was absolutely clear yesterday that trans that transition has to be time limited and she put a number on it of around two years and, and so she should. Uh, Jonathan, thank you very much for your time. Jonathan Isby is the editor of Brexit Central. Thank you.